Hi, I'm T.H. Culhane for Solar Cities, and we're up in Mud Creek Farm, up near Hudson, New York, and we're building our second New York basement-based biodigester. That's a lot of bees. Uh, this is an IBC. There's another bee there. IBC-based system. IBCs being international bulk containers. And these IBC tanks are ubiquitous, which is great because you can find them around the world, and that's why I in 2009 started building biodigesters out of IBCs. And this is the digester stomach and it's going to be connected to the kitchen sink where the uh, incinerator brand food grinder or garbage disposal or feedstock preparation device, take your pick, will be grinding up the food waste as a slurry and then we'll tee off of here, put a valve here and that will run across the roof joists here and then come down to this manifold, which will then distribute that into each of these tanks. These tanks are connected in parallel, not series, and that is so that we can double the amount of food waste we can use, because every thousand liters of tank space, which is what this is, 275 gallons or thousand liters, can only accommodate approximately one bucket worth, or about 25 liters, worth of food waste every day, before it has a chance to go acid go sour, and we want to avoid that. So in order to increase the amount of gas production, the amount of fertilizer production, we have two, and then we distribute the food evenly. And that will enable about 50 liters worth of food waste per day maximum to be fed. And there's valves here so that one could shut off each individual tank and use them as a separate system, and that would help in case there's a problem if one starts to go acid, because this is an animal. It's just a big artificial stomach of a sacred cow, if you like. If it begins to get indigestion, you can stop feeding it and only feed the other. And you can also use the healthy tank to re-inoculate the unhealthy tank. So having two tanks gives you some robusticity, some resilience in the system. And it, uh, it does, of course... Um, there, there's other theories that if you put them in series, you get 80% of your gas from the first tank in the chain and 20% from the second tank in the daisy chain. So there's arguments pro and con for having either series or parallel designs. However, we found that having a parallel design maximizes the gas output in terms of the amount of food that you can feed. Otherwise, you'd have 80% of less food coming into one tank and 20% of the winnings in the other for final curing. In this particular situation, the food waste goes down in pipes that go to the bottom of the tank and there are holes on either side of the two inch pipe so that it can be discharged into a, um, a gravel bed. This will be filled with water at all times and for starter we're going to put cow manure, hopefully fill it to about halfway with cow manure which is about uh, 200 uh, kilograms of, of cow manure that we would put in. And then there's a pipe which I can show you here because this one isn't yet put on. There's another pipe that comes out goes all the way to the bottom, but it has a hole like this in the center with the idea that the solids from the food residuals will either sink to the bottom and form part of that bioactive sludge layer, or the lipids will float up at the top. And so there'll be biologically active regions at the top and the bottom. The center will not be as active, and so that's where we draw our supernatant or slurry, the liquid organic fertilizer, the compost tea, if you like, comes around the center. And then because the level of water will be here as the pipes from the kitchen uh, distribute the food, then you will get also spillage out of this hole here into this tank. And so when this is on here, it's going to always naturally be filled about here with the spent fuel, if you like. Then as gas begins to build up in here, because this is a sealed tank with a o-ring seal. So when you have this completely hermetically sealed here and this is filled with water, as it bubbles or farts if you like, the stomach will fart to be indelicate about it, that gas has nowhere to go. So the gas pressure is going to build up at the top of the tank here and exert a downward pressure on the water. That downward pressure on the water is going to force more fluid up and out here it's got nowhere to go. It'll also try to rise here, but 
because of water seeking its own level as it forces the water up here, it's also going to force out here because this is lower. What will happen then is this will begin to rise in the bucket. And so as the gas is produced, it's going to cause the fluid level to rise and rise and rise until it reaches here, this always being lower than there. And then there's going to be a tube out that is going to carry this fertilizer out from here as it rises and then to a drain, which will go into a sump, which will pump that wonderful nitrogen-rich liquid fertilizer out to either a holding tank in the garden or just out to the garden directly, depending on what configuration the farm wants. And that will be true there as well, so you'll have a pipe coming out of there, and this bucket will have the same thing. They will meet in the middle with a, uh, a pipe that will allow ambient pressure to, uh, of course, prevent uh, vacuum lock, and then that will go into the sump and out. What this also does is, as this fills with water, or slurry, and this is kept filled, this will exert a pressure on the gas, and you'll have a similar pipe coming out. And so the gas that's building up has to go somewhere, so it will rise up from this one-inch pipe into the reducer and the half-inch. This is above the water level, so the water level will always stop somewhere around here, and the gas will bubble out, and then that gas will go via a plastic hose out to a kitchen stove. And it doesn't need to be anything more than a typical clear plastic hose because it's not under any particular pressure. It's enough pressure, pressure of this, as it exerts down to push the gas, which is lighter than air, up to the kitchen. One thing we'll insert in the hose is a water trap, uh, overpressure relief, that will take the water vapor that's in it and let it drip out so it doesn't clog the line on its way to the kitchen. And also, if there was an uh, overproduction of gas, it would allow it to burp out. Um, so that's what will be here, and there'll be another one over here. IBCs were not made for biogas, of course, and the way that they're made where they dip in the center and a high point on either side means that one of the sides is going to collect gas and it's going to be dead space and you won't be able to get that gas out. Not a big deal. We're not talking about a whole lot of gas trapped there. And uh, the, as it gets forced, it'll force its way out there. And that's basically it, except for the heating. They will be insulated. We were going to use the least expensive, easiest to transport poly panel insulation and wrap it with stretch wrap. However, now we're considering putting spray foam or something with a higher R value as a box around this so that it stays nice and warm because it needs to be at body temperature, so about 37 Celsius or 98.6 Fahrenheit for optimum results. It will work down to 15 degrees Celsius, which is about 60 Fahrenheit, and uh, it'll be very low production value. And then somewhere around 2025, it'll begin to start kicking up, and it's non-linear, so really the gas production rapidly rises as you move toward body temperature. So it will be important to try to keep these heated. So we have this PEX, and the PEX will go inside. This coil will be inserted down there with uh, an in and out stub that then can go to a hot water line or can be put to a solar hot water system. And the ideal is to have just a solar hot water system that constantly cir circulates the same water through the panel and then down through the coils and back up through the panel with the circulation pump. That would be ideal. And we are filling it with gravel. We'll fill it with the manure. One can always improve the performance of these by putting more surface area in and the lids will be able to be opened and at some point it might be for us to put uh, pond filter blocks, plastic blocks, inside. That's what I've done in Germany to give the bacteria and the microbes even more surface area to live on. So there's all sorts of ways that you can make these improve. They're, they are limited because the area that you can get in is very small, so there's not a lot you can do. In the commercially uh, built models that are beginning to appear, they're built with surfaces like a coral reef inside for the bacteria to live. But that's um, Part of what we'll be looking at is ways to more easily retrofit this because we believe that the IBC tanks, which are used for composting toilets, for biodiesel production, for storing gray water, for storing rainwater, uh, for aquaponics, 
they're a great uh, utility to have, and, and when you start making biodigesters from these, many more people can replicate these rapidly. So for all those of you out in the DIY world, give it a try. This is open source Solar Cities IBC uh, biogas systems. We want everybody to improve them, make them easier to use. One thing is these don't store the gas. They provide a little bit of storage that is only as much as this bucket can hold. That would only allow you to cook for three to five minutes. So for storage, we generally use PVC bladders. If you get from China, so just imagine a bigger bag than this, a bag as big as this tank, a thousand liters, and this inflates with gas, and then there's a pump that pumps it to the kitchen stove. That's how the Chinese do it. I've done it with plastic bags and used a throw rub to compress the gas out. There's also the idea of using a floating drum digester, which is basically a water tank with another tank inside it. And um, you can store, and then you have a floating drum that holds the gas, and that can be done outside. But uh, it's a little bit more expensive, and it's a lot easier to use a plastic bag. So that's it for now. We're still building, and we'll give you an update when we're more on way. I am drilling the effluent hole for the half-inch unit seal. And where's our pen marker? You have a marker? Yes. Thank you. And I'm going to put it as high up on the bucket as I can go without uh, damaging the ability of the unit seal lip from sealing. I obviously don't want to do that because then I can't get in. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to make my hole.